Hey folks, I'm Milo Tash. Today we're going to be talking about a ridiculously deep rabbit hole of small functional backpacks. My relationship with backpacks has changed as my needs have evolved over the years, but I've always had some form of everyday carry backpack in my life. In my early 20s, it was a huge lug of a thing from Thule, which was originally a camera travel backpack turned U-Haul for my life. And as I grew older, the items I carried with me became more focused and simple, and thus the size of my bag became smaller as well. For the last five or so years, I've carried a Gregory hydration bag that's 21 liters minus the hydration bladder when in town, and obviously with the bladder when on the trail. And for those more business savvy attire engagements, I bring a leather briefcase. But I've recently found myself feeling that 21 liters was still a little too much, and my old Gregory, now very well loved, with foam shoulder straps looking a bit deflated, seems to slump half empty uh, wherever I bring it somewhere. So this led me to test some things. I recognize that the youths these days seem to be rocking those fancy fanny packs across their shoulders instead of on their waist, so I decided to give my partner's LL Bean fanny pack a try and loved how small it was, but I'm not quite cool enough to rock the Lululemon sling, and I do like to carry a little more than uh, its capacity for most adventures, so I started mapping out what it's, uh, what's important to me to bring around each day. I tend to need a small top layer for weather changes, notebook, pen, water bottle, snack, and my four small pouches with various personal effects, tools, tech stuff, etc. I will sometimes need a laptop, but I don't want it to be the whole purpose of the bag, and I also wanted a little wiggle room to carry something other than my usual if the need calls to me. So not a perfect science, but I measured out these objects together in a pile and compared it to the dimensions of my Gregory bag, I stared at REI backpacks in person, and came up with a number, 15, as in 15 liters. That was my goal. Uh, that felt like the right size for me, and after narrowing that down, I've been hunting for a 15-liter backpack for the better part of a month and a half, and I truly started to believe that a small, functional backpack, specifically around 15 liters, just does not exist. Now, I can almost hear you saying, Psh, Milo, you're crazy, I've got a new tab up on my browser right now, and I'm listening to you, and I'm googling small backpacks, and there's thousands upon thousands of results. I believe you. No need to convince me. You're 100% correct. There are loads of 15 liter backpacks, or at least loads of ones that are between the range of 10 liters to 18 liters. And after boring holes into them online with my eyes, I can say that with about 98% certainty that none of them were what I was looking for. Some key features you might ask? One, simple color. Black, gray, brown, green, just nothing flashy. Two, not outdoorsy, but still rugged. I didn't want to look like I was going for a hike every single day, and I didn't want to look out of place if I did end up going outside on a hike. And three, give me zippers. Uh, to heck with Velcro, pull strings, mash enclosures for those compartments, uh, just, just zippers. Zippers are great, thank you. Uh, last but not least, the ability to just hold the aforementioned items uh, that I wish to carry. I've been trying to bend and fold Google in different ways for weeks, trying to trick it into different dazzling results uh, than what I was already finding, which was similar to your search, yielding trillions of small backpacks that all look alike and they sort of fit the bill, but no. I've been scanning searches on major backpack brands and cottage bag designers alike, thinking if I just design my query with different keywords like EDC or like Patagonia but not Patagonia, I'd find something different. And I did think that I'd find something in the pages upon pages of Gregory, Patagonia, Mountain Hardware, Tobo, Fjallraven, Nomadic, Osprey, Thule, Timbuktu, Eagle Creek, Bellroy, Air, Mystery Ranch, Hell, even Jansport bags, and the list goes on and on and on, but zilch. Why? Two key problems. One, small backpack seems to mean something different to everyone and every brand. And two, if I get specific, like narrowing it down to a bag that's 15 liters, it seems to be a size that no one wants or wants to make or their travel backpacks with next to no structural support or their children's bags. So then I started thinking, what's wrong with me? Why do I want a backpack this size, but I can't find it and that means no one else wants it, so why do I want it? Is my reasoning flawed? But no. So why do I want a backpack that is a size that no one wants? Dude, you tell me. I feel like you should want this size to exist too. But clearly, I don't need to convince you since you're watching this video and you somehow came across this in your search for a 15 liter bag. Well, I'm here to make your day. I did find a backpack and it is almost 15 liters. 14 liters to be exact. And that's close as I could get. So without further ado, let's get into it. This is the Chrome Industries Ruckus 14 liter backpack. Let's start with the outside. 
As for shape, it's small, but not so thin that you can't actually put something in there other than a book. And it's not square. All small backpacks seem to play up the small factor by being square. The Ruckus has some length to it, which aesthetically I enjoy. I appreciate the simple black and gold detailing. It does come in a light green and a cream color, but I went for the classic black. The lining matches the pull strings and is bright and easy to find things inside. The material is stated as being from recycled materials, which is probably a poly nylon mix vibe, which is fine. I don't love it, but it does have some water resistant properties and we'll see how well it holds up over time. I'm not concerned, but if something did happen, Chrome does have a lifetime warranty for their bags. I love the water bottle holder. It lays flat if it's not in use, but has elastic cinches which allow a slim bottle to slip in nicely and stay put. But I'm the sort of kid who likes to throw a water bottle inside a backpack sometimes. I don't know, I'm evolving and feeling that out. Sometimes everything just must be chucked into the inside of a bag. Uh, then with this particular style bag, it doesn't feel like I'm committing to a water bottle slot that I don't end up using sometimes. And the water bottle slot is also not just mesh. Uh, like a lot of other ones are, and it, if you put a water bottle in, it doesn't sink all the way to the bottom. Water bottles seem to cost as much as laptops these days, so it's nice to have a feature to protect it from being dinged on the floor if you rest it down there. Hey, real quick, if you enjoy this video, I would really, really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe. It not only tells me that you're enjoying the stuff that I make, which I love to hear, but also it tells YouTube, which helps me and the channel out immensely. Thanks, let's get back to it. Moving inside the bag, the organization is fabulously simple. The front pocket is what I needed to stow my wallet, keys, sunglass case, etc. And it hides under this little flap. It also expands a bit, which is lovely when I want to shove a pair of gloves or a hat in there. The internal organization is fab as well, with some small simple pockets, a few pen slots, and a little mesh liner for the inside near the water bottle slot. I think a person could, in theory, place a water bottle here for those inside water bottle bag days, but I think it would come in handy for an umbrella or something like that. The zippers are lovely. They glide nicely and they open to a semi-full zip open on one side of the bag, allowing really clear access to the contents. And to a really, really nice part of the bag, there is an isolated laptop sleeve in the back, which is accessible from a side zipper. The pouch is padded, hidden and doesn't get in the way of taking up space when it's not housing a laptop. You could easily shove a spare base layer in there or some notebooks in lieu of a computer. It holds a 13 inch laptop and doesn't shuffle about when it's loaded in there. It's super snug. On the back side, there is ample cushion and an airway space for your back comfort and the straps are super comfy even when you have it fully loaded out. There are basic sternum straps and easy looped cinching, cinching straps and there's also a hidden, thoughtful, playful handle thing in the middle of the backpack, which I have used to help land the backpack down when it is loaded sideways for laptop, and it's just brilliant and commanding. Before finding this bag, which seems to truly be a unicorn of a bag, I was trying to talk myself into buying the Mystery Ranch Rip Ruck 15. I loved the size, but it has some fatal flaws with the water bottle sleeve being solely on the right side and the material being a slightly inferior Roebuck nylon. I loved the less structured design, so you can truly fill it up throughout, and I enjoyed the thoughtful Rip Ruck front cover with the magnetic closure and dual zips. Who knows? It keeps lingering on the edges of my mind, so I may need to give it a true test run in the future. I was also eyeing up the Tom Bin 17 liter daylight backpack, the 14 liter roll top mini from Stubble & Co, and the GORUCK bullet. The Tom Bin daylight felt a little big and unstructured for true everyday use, and the 14 liter Stubble & Co roll top was, well, it's just a roll top, which I feel silly, but I couldn't commit to the time that it takes to re-roll a roll top every time I go into a bag. Apparently I go into bags a lot and it just seemed like too much hassle. Um, but the GORUCK was a pretty cool design, but it did feel a little too military. I wanted a little more organization and didn't need a fully unzippable bag. Some runners up were Osprey's 15 liter daylight cinch, which felt a little too campery for city use, and Fjall Raven's uh, Lapland 15, which I dug the wax canvas but was uh, a little uh, freaked out by that price point of it being nearly 200 USD. And I tend to find Fjall Raven to have so many compartments that I lose things in them, uh, which 
I do really like a lot of their other gear, just saying. But then there was also a uh, Bellroy Classic 16 liter backpack, which made me feel a little Ninja Turtle-ish for the shape. For a go-to backpack that could be a nice partner to my Filson rucksack, which I take with me traveling, uh, the Why Not Deploy backpack might be that option, as well as for a truly packable bag that has good support and structure when it's not all bundled up. But again, not my go-to use for every day. Uh, Chrome ended up just selling me on the price, which was just right for the size coming in uh, a little shy of 100 USD. Uh, the style and the simple organization were just cherries on top. Plus, I had planned to swap out whatever pull strings came on whatever bag I had decided on with some gold paracord, uh, but this had already had that on there, so it felt like a predestined match. I did find myself missing the options for personalization that the Ripruck holds, so I attached some industrial strength Velcro to the outside of the bag so I could rotate various patches. Seems to be holding up so far, so I think I'll probably continue with that. I will be using this as my go-to for all sorts of adventures, so I'm looking forward to putting it to the true test over the foreseeable future. I hope you enjoyed the overview of this mini bag, and I also wish you all of the luck as you narrow in on your bag of your dreams. As always, I'm Milo Tash. Thanks for watching.